So it's been about a year, so I figure, you know, maybe it's time to update my knives that I'm carrying uh, often this year uh, because it's changed a bit since last year. Um, I don't know. I think there's maybe one knife, two knives, maybe two knives that are the same that were in my thing last year of knives that I've carried the most or most carried or, or whatever you want to call it. Carried a lot of knives. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call this video yet. Uh, but pretty much this is just, a, you know, a look at some of the knives that I carried a lot in 2023. And I did this video last year around this time for 2022. And basically I'm just looking at the knives that I've been carrying a lot, how they're holding up, um, what has changed about them and everything. Uh, because a lot of them I've done videos on and it's kind of cool to see how they're holding up, how they've changed over time and all that, you know, especially since I carry a lot of well, almost exclusively traditional pocket knives with carbon and steel blades. So they develop patina and scratches and their handles change and all sorts of stuff. Um, I think maybe I'm going to post this on my birthday and maybe I'll just make it like a yearly thing where I do one of these really long uh, drawn out videos talking about the knives that I've carried a lot that year. So I may do that, but I feel like it's been about a year. So I feel like it's time to update this. Um, so starting here in front of me, this has probably become one of my most carried knives this year, if not my most carried knife this year, because I carry this for pretty much a month straight after I got it, um, which is strange because I don't really generally find the sheep's foot or Warncliffe blade shapes that useful in my day-to-day -day life because a lot of my uh, knife usage involves cutting food. And a sheep's foot or Warncliffe blade isn't the best at that. Um, but this is the A. Wright and Son Barlow. Let's see if my phone wants to focus there. The A. Wright and Son Barlow uh, stag handles. This stag isn't the best stag. It's really lost a lot of its color uh, due to me carrying it. Um, and it's got this, uh, they call it a Warncliffe blade. I'm going to continue to call it a sheep's foot blade because I think it's closer to a sheep's foot than a Warncliffe. And I'm going to, I don't have a Warncliffe here, but, but this is a sheep's foot blade and this is the main blade on this knife. They are the same shape. So this is a sheep's foot blade. Um, if you guys want to argue with me, that's fine. I know they call it a Warncliffe blade, but I'm going to call it a sheep's foot blade. Um, but anyway, I carried this for like a month straight because I enjoyed it so much. It's very easy to just pinch open with your fingers, which is always nice uh, for like a one bladed pocket knife. It's really nice to just be able to pinch it open, especially if you're wearing gloves or something um, and, you know, pull out your blade, use it to cut whatever and close it again. Um, and you can see here, I've used it to cut some food and stuff and spend some time in my pocket developed some like fruit patina there and some pepper spots that used that were rust and stuff that I scraped off. Um, so yeah, this knife has been in my pocket quite a bit, been used to cut a lot of stuff. There's scratches on the blade there. Um, I really need to work on my lighting setup. I'm actually moving um, soon. Before the end of November, I'm moving. Um, so. I may I'll probably wait till then to just uh, address any kind of issues because I would like to work on my lighting setup and everything. Maybe just get another table lamp or something. I'm not sure exactly what I have to do. I'll mess around with lighting and stuff. Um, but I am moving this year, so I don't want to mess around with anything right now. Um, but anyway, back to the knife. Uh, you can see there's you know scratches on the blade there from cutting cardboard and whatever else, um, staining and spots on the blade and everything all sorts of like you know markers of use of the knife uh the action on these uh a right and sun knives is crazy and i love it very very strong back spring on these um and they're very affordable i love these a right and sun uh, pocket knives you can see here the bolster used to be really shiny now it's like it's been stonewashed by my pocket <laughs> My uh, change, my keys, everything that rides around in my pockets just been rubbing against that bolster for over a month and, you know, got it 
to pretty much be like a stone wash finish almost. And another thing that I've noticed, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this because of my phone and lighting situation here, but the end of the bolster and the brass liner here have actually started to get some like little like divots in them from keys and stuff, which is interesting. Um, but you can certainly tell that I've carried this knife quite a bit. Um, and this is probably my most carried knife this year, just because I switch around knives so much, and I carried this one for a month straight. Um, but yeah, wonderful knife. I definitely recommend it if you can pick one up. If, if you live over the Atlantic, it's probably pretty easy for you to pick one up. Uh, if you live here in the United States, you want to go to James Brand, James Brand on uh, All About Pocket Knives. I think it's .net, um, and he's got A Wright knives and Taylor's Eyewitness knives uh, for sale over there. So if you're trying to buy some of these Sheffield-made uh, pocket knives, go check him out. Uh, but this is definitely a knife that I would recommend. I love it. It's wonderful. One of my favorite knives um, at this point, probably. Certainly, I think probably my favorite knife that I've bought this year, and that's saying a lot because I've bought a few GECs this year. I think my Great Eastern Cutlery Remington Granddaddy Barlow I bought this year, and this is my favorite knife, which is like a $60 knife from Sheffield, England. But I absolutely love the knife. Um, so on to the next one here. Another European-made knife here. Uh, my buddy over at uh, knivesoffrance.com. That's knives, I think it's a dash, like a hyphen of hyphen france.com i think is his website um i think he's still using my coupon codes if you want to buy a french knife from him you can use code bakery wizard all lowercase and i think that gets you 10 percent off a purchase of 50 dollars or more something like that but you can use that coupon code or whatever but this is the gr alpin or alpine um you can see the a-L-P-I-N-G-R, France. Um, but I've carried this knife quite a bit as well. Interesting shape, very pointy and thin, slicey blade, which is nice to have. Uh, kind of reminds you almost of like a toothpick when it comes to being pointy and slicey. Um, but yeah, you can see the patina on the blade there. The light's kind of messing it up a little bit, but you can see, you know, there's some staining on the blade and everything. Um, yeah, I really do need to work on my lighting setup once I move. Um, but yeah, so scratches on the blade, Tina, all that. Um, yeah, so this knife spent quite a while in my pocket after I bought it. Um, it does have a half stop. You have to be careful with these French knives that you can't just slam the blade shut because most of the time the blade is resting on the back spring. And once again, the reason why they do that is so that you can sharpen the blade um, like pretty much forever without having the tip of the blade stick out. But that means you have to close the knife more carefully. The blade is not centered at all. In fact, it is resting really hard up against this liner. Whatever. It hasn't really affected the use of the knife. Um, I did a little scrimshaw Eiffel Tower there. It's not very well done, but that's really not the purpose of something like that. That was just to make it uh, cool and mine, pretty much. I'm not trying to sell it as art or anything. Um, and I think it came out pretty well, considering I had very limited practice trying to do any kind of scrimshaw. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks cool and like rustic and like somebody who doesn't know what they're doing did it, which is true. But, you know. I think it's very on brand for a pocket knife to have something like that on it. Um, the blade, the pull on this blade is pretty crazy. It's very strong. It snaps open with authority. Um, so the action on it's very nice. I will not close it, slam it closed because once again, French knife. But yeah, um, it's got horn handles, meaning you could get this like lighter color. You could get like a bit of a darker color. Um, I'm happy that I got the lighter horn because I did this scrimshaw in it. I am still kind of thinking about maybe doing something on this side, but I'll probably just leave it the way it is. Um, but I carried this quite a bit earlier this year. I haven't carried it so frequently uh, recently because I've been carrying, well, for one, that A. Wright and Son Barlow and my other French knives that I have. Um, 
typically try to throw a French knife into my pocket for French Friday. Uh, check out hashtag French Friday on Instagram and you'll see a bunch of stuff that's not knife related. But you'll also see me and Stefan, I think, who is the owner of KnivesOfFrance.com, uh, posting what French knife we're carrying on a Friday. Um, so maybe check that out. Maybe use the hashtag if you're carrying a French knife on a Friday. Uh, something to think about. Um, but anyway, this is the GR Alpin from France. And it is a wonderful little knife. I really like the handle shape. Um, I like how thin and slicey the blade is. The blade centering sucks, whatever. Um, but overall, nice little knife. I enjoy carrying it. I enjoy using it. And I like my little uh, scrimshaw I did on there to make it mine. All right, next knife here. All right, we're going to talk about this one uh, because some sad news came out about these, about this company in the last like couple of months here. Uh, this is the Old Hickory... Folder. I'm not even sure it has an actual name. Is there a model number on this or anything? No. Okay. This is the old Hickory folder. I don't know if it has an actual name. I'm sure it did. Um, I'm just going to call it a folder. Um, but yeah, made by Ontario Knife Co. The old Hickory knives are made in America. Uh, that's going to be changing because Ontario, unfortunately, was sold. And I think whoever bought it has already stated that they're not going to be making any of the knives in America. So that kind of sucks. We lost another uh, knife brand. I'm not somebody who is, like, super all about I only buy American-made knives. But it always sucks when you lose another American-made uh, knife brand. Um, but anyway... More about the knife. This is the old hickory. I still don't know what it's called. I'm just going to call it the folder. It's got this interesting drop point, almost spade blade shape here. Instead of having a nail nick, they cut a hole in the blade. I don't know if that's cheaper or they thought it would look cooler or what. Um, you can see there there's patina, little pepper spots from rust and stuff on the blade. I didn't carry this super a lot, but I mean, I think I carried it for at least a week or two. Um, Wooden handles, they have kind of a bit of a polish on them, which honestly I don't think I prefer. But I'm not sure what the blade's made out or what the wood's made out of, so it might be good that it's a little bit um, polished or whatever. You know, that might help it hold up better and stuff. But obviously carbon steel blade, I think it's 1095, although I'm not 100% sure about that. Um but yeah, just a pretty nice little knife. Um, they are a little bit expensive for what you get, but they are American made. I think it was like $40. Um, does have a half stop. As you can see, the action is really good. And that little hole in the blade there makes it really easy to pinch open with your fingers. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend using it as a nail neck, although you can. I really think it's more meant to be just pinched open. Because I think that's what it works the best with. Um, but really great, really great action on this knife. Um, handles just about big enough for four of my fingers. And the blade is an interesting shape. Like I said, it's like a drop point, but it's almost like spade blade shape. Um, and it's an interesting little knife that I have not really carried a whole lot recently, um, once again. But I carried it quite a bit in the start of the year. Um, and I do like the knife. Um, I've just kind of put it in the uh, knife storage chest and kind of forgotten about it for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll do the brass pins, brass liners. I don't know if the back spring's carbon steel or if it's stainless. Uh, don't know yet, but the blade is definitely carbon steel. Like I said, I think it's 1095, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, great little knife. If you can pick one up still, they're like $40 or so. And I would say it's worth the $40, although that is right at like the edge of probably what it's worth. Um, of course, it's worth more just because it's a USA made knife. Um, one of the first Great Eastern Cutlery of the uh, video here. This is my Great Eastern Cutlery 81 uh, Muskrat. No, not, well, yeah, it's a Muskrat, but it's called the Coon Skinner, I think, uh, which has to do with raccoons. Um, it's not any kind of weird uh, epithet. Is that the word I'm looking for? 
Um, it's about skinning raccoons. Don't be weird. Um, but this is a muskrat pattern based on the 81 uh, pattern. This is a muskrat. Yeah, that's right. Muskrat pattern based on the 81 pattern. That sounds weird, but it's correct, I think. Uh, this one's in Coffee House Acrylic. Um, as you can see, the cool thing about these is that they only have one back spring, just like a traditional muskrat would, whereas more modern muskrats usually have two back springs because it's easier to make it that way, I think. Um, but Great Eastern Cutlery being Great Eastern Cutlery, they made it just one back spring for two blades, so that's cool. Um, I call this uh, my sweetheart knife because me and my girlfriend have matching ones of these because I really thought she would like the... Uh, you know, cool acrylic and the uh, corset shield. And, you know, I think she does like the knife quite a bit. She doesn't really ever carry it because uh, carrying knives, I don't think is really her thing. But uh, we do have matching uh, 81 muskrats, which is cool and makes me happy. <laughs> um, but uh, I've carried this knife quite a, quite a bit. Uh, I did bring it on my trip with me, along with a bunch of other knives. Um, but standard muskrat with two long clip blades two long slend more slender clip blades uh, this is a titty model so it's not high polished it's just the satin blades like i prefer um but you can see here blade this blade's got some spots on it some slight patina maybe my light here is really making it difficult to show anything but yeah, you can see some slight patina there. Um, some spotting on the blade. You know, evidence of pocket time and use and everything. Um, the action on both of these blades is wonderful. I think this one has a little bit more staining on it from cutting stuff. Um, it does. Um, but yeah, so action on the blades is really nice. Knife's put together really well, like you would expect from Great Eastern Cutlery. I just bump my tripod. Um, single back spring for two blades. Brass liners, brass pins. Uh, corset shield, which is pinned, which is nice. Um, and I really do love this coffee acrylic, because it's kind of like almost like an orange color, and then it's got some brown kind of swirling through it there kind of makes it look a little bit like a really light roast of coffee, I suppose. Um, but I really like the acrylic. And um, acrylic certainly has grown on me over the years. I now have uh, a few acrylic knives. In fact, there's going to be another one in this video. Um, so acrylic's really grown on me. Um, I really like the muskrat pattern. And I think the Great Eastern Cutlery 81 uh, Coonskinner is probably the best muskrat pattern that you're going to find and the interesting thing to me because i love the 81 muskrat is this isn't a very popular pattern so you can still find these on like ebay if you're a part of like a secondary uh seller group or something for great eastern cutlery or just other pocket knives you may be able to find one of these for around like 120 dollars if you're lucky um, of course, on eBay, they're going to be a little bit more than that, but they're easy to find, which is not something you can say about all Great Eastern Cutlery knives, unfortunately. I'm still trying to get an 85 River Town Jack or one of the Barlows. because I loved those. Unfortunately, they immediately sold out, but I really want that River Town Jack, and I have not found one at a reasonable price yet. Maybe after the move. I don't know yet. <laughs> Um, but for now, I'm not really buying a whole lot of knives because money. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 81 Muskrat from Great Eastern Cutlery, I think is probably the best Muskrat you can buy. If you like Muskrats, you may want to try to find one of these. Uh, they did it in this Coffee House Acrylic. They did it in a red, I think they call it Red Onion Micarta. I have one of those as well. I'm not getting rid of it. Don't ask. Um in Red Onion Micarta, and they did it in Desert Ironwood, which I think the wood was a little disappointing for that run. It didn't come out as well as they thought it was going to. And I feel like there was another handle material. Oh, Yellow Bone, Yellow Rose Bone. Um, they did it in that as well. Um, but yeah, 
really nice little muskrat pattern. If you like muskrats, maybe try to find one of these. Um, wonderful little knife. I've carried it quite a bit. Um, let's go into a controversial knife. So, I still don't know if this is, this is actually made in the United States or not. Um, and Smoky Mountain Knife Works just recently launched another run of queen knives that are definitely made in the United States. So I'm not exactly sure. I still feel like Smoky Mountain Knife Works wouldn't have lied about it because they have other queen knives labeled as queen knives made in China, and they ha pretty happily do that. So I don't know why they would lie about these two uh, jumbo trappers being made in the USA. The only thing I can figure is it's possible that some of the parts were not made in the United States, and that's why it doesn't have a stamp on it or something. Um, and I don't know who made these. It's possible. I still think that it's possible that Cooper Cutlery made them just because it feels similar to my Cooper Cutlery knives that I have. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure, and I don't know. So I'm sorry I can't help you there. Uh, but it has been a great knife. Like I've carried it quite a bit. It's been wonderful. It's carbon steel, so I like that. Um, but I'm just not sure what exactly the origins of it are. I think it's made in the United States because that's what Smoky Mountain Knife Works said, and I'm not sure why they would lie about that. But who knows? Um, but anyway, this is the Queen... What did they call this? They had a name for this. I forget, the Big Boy Trapper, maybe? That might be what it was. Big Boy Trapper, maybe? Something like that. It's a Jumbo Trapper. Same as other Jumbo Trappers. Um, jigged Red Bone. Which is cool looking. Um, they also did a saw cut, which I also have one of, but I haven't carried it uh, very much. Or, I don't think I've carried it at all. Um, fit and finish on these is... It's okay. This is a $60 knife, or $50 knife, maybe even. Um, so it's decent for the price. Um, but, you know, I think it was a little fruit fly or something. Gross. Um, so it's decent for the price. Um, but, you know, the queen knives that they just released are like $70. 70 to 100 I think the Jumbo Trapper in... Stag is 100 right now. But these these are fairly decently well made. They didn't have any... This one doesn't have any blade play. Um, the blade is carbon steel. You can see some staining on it there where I cut some fruit or something with it. Um, scratches on the blades since it's such a high polish. The scratches really show up on high polish blades. It's another reason why I like the satin blade finishes other than just being easier to film, which this is not, as you can tell there. Um, but yeah, a lot of scratches. Um, yeah, but the action one, it's pretty good. It's not amazing or anything. It's not great Eastern cutlery levels or anything. And it looks like I might actually have some like rust there unless that's just staining. I think that's just staining, but it's awfully brown. I may try to clean that up a little bit. I'm not sure. I haven't carried it in a while. Um, but, you know, it is one of my more carried knives this year. Um, but yeah, this was a controversial knife because Smoky Mountain Knife Works said it was made in the United States. The tang stamp just says Queen. It doesn't say U.S. or USA made or where it's made or anything like that. There's model number there. Uh, so a lot of people were really questioning if it was made in the United States or not, including a bunch of people that said it's definitely not made in the United States because of this and this and this and this, and this, and this, and I'm not going to pretend to know, but once again, I just don't know why they would lie about it when they have other knives with the queen name stamped on them that aren't made in the United States, they're made in China, and they're pretty open about that. But, yeah, there's been a lot of controversy around this knife. Also, when they first posted it to the website, I think it said it was made in China, but I think that was just a posting error like they copied and pasted from another queen knife and it just so happened to say China and they didn't fix it. That would be my guess anyway. But when they introduced these knives, they said they were USA made. Um, so once again, controversial, not really sure, but I would guess that it's made in the USA. Um, but who really knows? I'm just not sure why they would lie about it.
Um, but all that aside, all the controversy aside, I like this knife. I think it's pretty well made. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, which is another reason why I think maybe Gilbert Gilbert. No, it's not Gilbert. It's Cooper Cutlery. Gilbert his first name. Um, but Cooper Cutlery, I think, may have made this knife. It's got some slight gaps there with the cover. Another cover issue there. Or handle issue, depending on how in into traditional pocket knives you are. It goes back and forth. Uh, Queen Shield there. I don't believe it's pinned. I cannot see. I'm going to have to pull away for a second here. It is not pinned. It's just glued. I don't know if the new ones will be pinned or not. Uh, I have one ordered, so I will let you know when I get it if it is, has a pin shield or not. I'm hoping it does, but who knows. Um, but standard Jumbo Trapper setup, uh, you know, like a drop point or maybe a Skinner blade if you want to call it that. But like a drop point blade, maybe even a clip point if you want to get really weird with your terminology, um, and a spade blade which is a pretty good setup. Although I don't really like a standard trapper. I only get into trappers once they get to be gigantic because I love a jumbo trapper, but I don't really have much love for a regular trapper. Um, but anyway, queen, uh, big boy trapper, I think is what it was called. Weird name. Just call it a jumbo trapper, man. Let's call it queen jumbo trapper. You don't need to give it some sort of weird name like big boy trapper. Um, but yeah, so controversial knife, but I think a pretty good knife overall, especially for the price. Um, I certainly wouldn't compare it to Great Eastern Cutlery, but it costs about half as much as a Great Eastern Cutlery, and that's new. You can't get them new, so, you know, it costs about a third of the price of a Great Eastern Cutlery knife. Speaking of, uh, Great Eastern Cutlery 65 Ben Hogan um, knife, which is a, you know, a little bit bigger of a knife, but it's also a slender knife, so it's not really annoying to carry let me compare it to this yeah about the same length much thinner in all dimensions um but this is a ben hogan i believe it's named after a character who used to live in titty pennsylvania who was apparently quite the character who was a civil war spy and all sorts of other stuff and who knows if any of that's true but that's the story that's who this knife is named after it's not named after a golfer Apparently, um, but so this is 65 Ben Hogan. I did try to slightly dye it a slight blue. The dye is kind of starting to wear off a little bit. I may just go full blown and just full on blue dye it one of these days or a different color. Maybe even I could see doing purple. That'd be cool. Um, so we'll see what I do there, but it has a slightly bluish greenish tint to it. One guy said it looks like that corrosion that brass gets, um, which is interesting. But yeah, so was the white smooth bone. It has yellowed a little bit, I think. And then, of course, I've added my little bit of blue to it. So it does have a very interesting look. Um, and I like it. Another knife that uses the corset shield, which is a cool shield, I have to say. I really do like that shield that Great Eastern Cutlery uses there. Um, but yeah, so on to the blade of the knife here. It has a half stop. It's a long uh, clip point. See there, it says Ben Hogan on the blade, 1865. There is a little bit of um, patina on the blade here. Nothing insane or anything. Um, I've carried this knife quite a bit. I haven't really cut much food with it, which is why the blade isn't super patinaed up and everything. Um, the back spring has a little bit of spotting on it there, it looks like. But nothing crazy. Um, and the bolster and shield are pretty well uh, stonewashed from the stuff in my pocket. Coin washed, key washed, whatever you want to call it. Um, it ends up looking like a stone wash finish. Um, but yeah, that happens when you carry a knife a lot. And I don't use pocket slips because I can't stand them. I've tried to use pocket slips multiple times, um, especially when I get like a new knife or like a fancy knife and I want to protect it. But I just can't stand them. I go and I pull it out and then I have to pull the knife out of the pocket slip and then I have to set the pocket slip down somewhere and it's like, this is too much work. I'm just going to throw the knife in my pocket like it's supposed to be. Um, so I actually really kind of like the look that knives get after they're in your pocket for a while, how the bolsters get all scratched up and everything. I like that. Some people don't like that. Um, put it in a pocket slip if you want to, but I cannot stand them, so I don't do that. 
Um, ben Hogan, knife I was really looking forward to because it reminds me a little bit of like a Daddy Barlow. Of course, since then, Great Eastern Country's released a Daddy Barlow um, as a Remington knife for Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and I have not carried that knife like at all, pretty much. Great knife, I just can't bring myself to carry it uh, yet. And I'm sure I'll get there one of these days, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Carried it a couple of times, but nothing like uh, most of my knives I carry uh, pretty frequently. Um, but yeah, you know, longer, longer blade, longer knife in general. Good size for people with hands like mine. Plenty of room for your hand. Um, I like a little bit longer blade. Three and a half inches is about perfect. Uh, four inches is cool. Um, I, I do like a bigger knife, though. Some people don't, uh, but the Ben Hogan's one of the better patterns for people like me who like a little bit bigger knife, especially since it is bigger, but it's also, you know, slender, more slender, thin, and more, like, long than it is wide. So it doesn't really bother you that much in your pocket um, when you carry it, so that's nice. Uh, of course, it will still bother you more than a very small knife will, but I mean, it's a big knife, so, um, but cool knife overall, I think my little die job is a little silly, um, and I made a video about how I ruined this knife, quote unquote, uh, last year, because I did this, um, but I mean, overall, I think it looks, I think it looks okay, um, like I said, I may try to re-dye it, we'll see what happens, but that's the 65 Ben Hogan from Great Eastern Cutlery, a knife that I've carried quite a bit, but I don't know. I don't really ever talk about it that much um, because it's not super exciting or flashy or anything. Um, let's go on to this one. The only Baron Sun knife on this list, um, which is a Stockman, which is interesting because I have a bunch of Baron Sun Barlows. But for whatever reason, I was carrying this Stockman a lot. And actually, this is the only Stockman here. Yeah, <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, this is Baron Sun. I think it's Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive green stag bone stockman. It's got that shield they've been using for 55 years. That says carbon fourth generation. That's a joke, by the way. I don't even know if Baron Sun's been around for 55 years. They've been using this for at least five years. Um, so I'm not sure what that means, but that's the shield they put on all of their carbon knives. Um, which, of course, this is. This is a Stockman, similar in size to like a case medium Stockman, I think, or somewhere in between a case medium Stockman and a case large Stockman. It's certainly not a, it's certainly not a similar size to a case large Stockman. Um, but it's got your normal Stockman blades, you know, clip point, main blade, sheep foot, and a spade blade. Um, carbon steel, like I said, the action on all the blades is actually pretty good. Just shocking for a Stockman, because usually spade blades action really sucks. But the action on all of these blades is pretty good. So I'm happy about that. Uh, but anyway, the main clip blade here has some patina on it and stuff. It's another knife that I brought on my trip, because at the time I was carrying it quite a bit. It's going to be hard to show the patina here because of the light, but you can see a little bit there. Some staining on it and stuff. Nothing crazy, but, you know, evidence that I have cut food with it and everything. It does have a bit of a rounded tip on it, but if you buy case knives, you'll be used to that already. Um, rounded tip's not the end of the world. It's still pointy enough to poke into a package or whatever, but not as pointy as you typically want a knife to be. Um, but pretty well made, this one. Uh, one of my better made Baron Sun knives, I have to say. Um, there is some slight gaps, but it doesn't seem to be, be really affecting anything. There's no blade play or anything. Um, this knife's all steel, as far as I can tell. Um, it only uses one pin, so I'm guessing that it's epoxied down, and at least there's one pin holding the handles on. And I'm sure it'll be fine, but you know, typically you have a pin there and a pin there as well, sometimes even a pin there. Um, shields glued in, of course. Um, these are usually a little bit rougher when you get them. It still had some polishing compound and stuff on it. That's just what you get when you buy a, you know, more affordable knife. And Baron Sun, if you haven't heard me talk about them before, it is, 
it is a more budget um, friendly American made knife and they're made in Alabama. I always forget this, the part of Alabama that they're made in, but they're made in Alabama and they're a really well-made knife or, well, they're a really well-made knife for the price that you pay. Usually this one's a well-made knife. Um, I've had some fit and finish problems with Baron Sun in the past. Um, including two Barlows from this run that sucked. A Barlow that I got recently that I haven't made a video on that's kind of sucks. Um, a Muskrat that sucks. Yeah, Baron Sun's not necessarily the best made knife, but they are affordable and they are American made. So if you're somebody who's always about buying USA made knives, Baron Sun is an option and is an affordable option, which is nice. Um, and you get a knife like this, this, um, this, uh, Stockman here. This one's pretty good. I don't know if you can still get this green stag bone right now. They're doing a maroon stag bone series. Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which looks like this. This is the medium lockback. Um, so right now you can get a Barlow in that, that medium lockback. And I think there's two different trappers. I don't know if they've made a Stockman yet. I think they were supposed to, but I don't know if they have. Um, but overall, this one's a pretty good example, and I like it a lot. I still throw it in my pocket occasionally because it's a nice little knife, um, and occasionally having three blades is nice. Um, that being said, do I really recommend Baron's Son? Well, if you've got $40 laying around to spend on a pocket knife, and you want to try out a American-made uh, traditional pocket knife, uh, and you want to buy one for $40, maybe try out Baron's Son. Just don't expect it to be the best made pocket knife you've ever seen. It'll probably be lesser quality than several of the Rough Riders that you have and everything. But, you know, maybe you'll feel some pride of the fact that it was made by Americans here in America, which is always kind of cool. Um, but this example here is very nice. I have a few Baron Son knives that are very nice. Um, so they certainly can produce nice knives, but occasionally you get a lemon. Case is pretty much like that too, but Baron Sun knives are considerably less expensive than a case knife. So, I mean, I like Baron Sun. Some people don't. I mean, I still like Case, even with all the problems I've had with them, um, with their more expensive knives. I mean, I still like both of them because they're American-made companies and... I like, I really like it when I get a nice knife from them. So anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about random stuff. Um, Baron Son Stockman. I think they call this their large Stockman. Uh, but I enjoy this one quite a bit and have carried it quite a bit. Okay, two more knives here. Save that one for last. Uh, TC, just bump the tripod again. Uh, Great Eastern Cutlery TC Barlow, Titty Cutlery Barlow. It's not Tom's Choice. I know some people have thought that over the years. It is not. This is a Titty Cutlery Barlow TC. That's what it stands for. Um, in Glitter Gold, it looks like rose, rose gold under my light, but it, I think it is Glitter Gold. Uh, it's more, much more gold in person here. Um, but yeah, if you're not familiar with the TC Barlow, it is one of legend. Um, the TC Barlow is a knife that I lusted after for a very long time. I have two of them in the traditional uh, 15 pattern, and I have a 14 TC Barlow. Um, so I have a couple of them now, and they are wonderful Barlows, and they're pretty much like, if you're a Barlow collector, this is the ultimate Barlow. As far as I'm concerned, it's your standard Barlow size. The 15 is, the 14 is a little smaller. Um, and then Great Eastern Cutlery makes a 77 Barlow, which is a little bit bigger than this. And they make an 86 Barlow now, which is bigger than the 77. I don't have one of them yet. But anyway, the TC Barlow's based on the 15 pattern, which is their kind of like boy's knife pattern, which is what you would traditionally make a Barlow out of. Um, the TC Barlow is the brainchild of Charlie Campagna, although this is from the run in 2019, 2020, was it 2019 or 2020? It was 2021. I was wrong on both guesses. 
Um, this is the first time in 2021 that Great Eastern Cutlery produced TC Barlows that were not the direct order of Charlie Campania. Now, the Charlie Campania SFO version of this I also have. <laughs> it's a sepia saw cut bone uh, TC Barlow, and that's a beautiful knife. But I didn't really want to carry that one super a lot, don't tell Charlie. Um, but, you know, at some point I might bust it out and carry it. Um, so I wanted to get a, one of these that I'd be more apt to just throw in my pocket and not be super upset about or whatever. Um, so I started looking and I started to really like these glitter gold, um, acrylic candles. So eventually I found one for a reasonable enough price, apparently. And I decided to, you know, go ahead and buy it. And I have carried the crap out of this thing. Really enjoy it. You can still see the etch there. Good as gold, which is doubly cool because of the glitter gold uh, but good as gold used to be an old uh, saying or like a trademark of titty cutlery back when titty cutlery was its own company and not a subsidiary of great eastern cutlery um way back in the day like early 1900s late 1800s i have a book about titty cutlery um you can find it on amazon um but yeah carbon steel blade um drop point or spear blade, sorry. It's not a drop point on a traditional pocket knife. It's a spear blade. Um, spear blade, swedge on the blade, long pull. I kind of wish it was just a standard uh, spear, spear blade with a nail neck, but it's a little fancier than that um, with this long pull and the swedge. Um, but yeah, I really like the spear, the spear blade Barlow uh, just because I think it really... Is probably the first like Barlow that there was because back when knives first started, it was pretty much you had a spear blade. <laughs> that was pretty much your blade. Um, they didn't have clip blades and stuff way back in the beginning. Um, and the Barlow is a very old pattern. Um, action on this is wonderful, like you would expect from a TC Barlow. Um, this knife has steel bolsters, steel liners, steel back spring. You can see there's some uh, pepper spots on the back spring there on a hot, sweaty summer day, I'm sure is when I got those. I'm not sure if there's any staining or anything on the bolster. There might not be, but it is steel. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out with this phone and my light here. Uh, but yeah, Glitter Gold TC Barlow has become one of my favorite uh, little Barlow's to carry. I really enjoy it. Um, but the, like, holy grail of the TC Barlow is the ancient TC Barlow, which is a Barlow that you, that you basically break out of the tube, and it's a knife that looks like it's been used for 20 years. But for some reason, all of us uh, Great Eastern Cutlery people are in love with them, and they are a wonderful made little knife, and they're awesome. Um, so basically I'm trying to turn this into one of them by just carrying it a bunch. Um, and I guess slowly kind of my, uh, a right may turn into that kind of, although it certainly won't be a great Eastern cutlery, but you know, it's cool once a knife gets some wear on it and stuff. Um, the last knife I'm going to talk about is my favorite knife that I own, which I've talked about before. Um, and that's this. Um, not Great Eastern Cutlery. That's this Winchester Moose from 1988, um, part of their Black Box series, which I believe uses bone from the old Utica factory, which is like over 100 years old, but the bone is really nice still, so they just went ahead and used it on some of these knives. Um, but yeah, Moose pattern. It's got a clip blade here. Really tough to open clip blade. Really strong back spring on that. This is a carbon steel blade. The wet, oh, you can still see the Winchester etch on the phone here. That's interesting. You can't really see it in real life. Ah, you can a little bit under the light, I guess. Um, but this blade's been patinaed several times and I've polished it off. Um, I cleaned it up the last time before I went on my trip in June. And I don't think I've carried it since I got back from my trip. So it's still polished up and everything. But I have carried this knife quite considerably. Um, yeah, and I just really love this knife. But I've cleaned it up a little bit since the last 
uh, well, since before the trip, I cleaned it up, and then I haven't carried it much since I got back from, or I don't think at all since I got back from the trip. You can see a couple spots here that must have not polished out. Um, but yeah, this is just my favorite knife that I own. This Winchester Moose. Um, just such a well-made knife. The action on that main blade is crazy, which is awesome. You can see here the Tang Stamp Winchester trademark made in USA, model number, and 88 for the year, for uh, 1988. Now, uh, this was made by Queen back in the er era when uh, Bill Howard, the guy that now owns Great Eastern Cutlery, uh, was still at Queen. So these uh, Black Fox Winchester knives are all pretty well made. Occasionally, you see one that's not as well made as they could be, but, you know, they're all pretty well made. Um, I may have polished off the blades, but you can still see here on, like, the bolster. It's still pretty scratched up and everything. Um, it does show some signs of pocket wear. Um, I just cleaned it up before I went on my trip because, for whatever reason, I wanted to have a shiny uh, Winchester Moose for my trip. Um, but, yeah. This is my favorite knife. I always have to mention it in here because I'm sure I've carried it more than a lot of the knives that I have uh, this year just because it is one of my favorites, or it is my favorite. Um, but yeah, so Winchester Moose, not too much to talk about about that because I've talked about it so much already. But made 1988, Queen, back when Bill Howard was there. And really nice knife, knife I love. Um, in fact, honestly... I've been thinking about, and I actually drew up one, getting a tattoo of this knife would be really cool. Um, but I don't know. I haven't decided if I want to do that fully or not. I have it drawn up already and everything. Um, and I'm sure that some tattoo artist would help me refine that and everything. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm just putting all the knives that I've mentioned in this video in front of me. And I've been talking for almost 50 minutes so i guess i'm gonna wrap this up here um these are the knives that i've carried the most in 2023 as far as i can figure out anyway i should find a way to keep track of it but i don't really have time for that because that would take a lot of time but i've carried these knives a lot in 2023 and this is just an update on some of the knives that i've carried a lot in 2023 there will be another video, and I think I'm going to plan on these videos coming out every year on my birthday, which is October the 8th. Um, so maybe look forward to next year's video. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you're not subscribed and you really like my videos, maybe you should consider doing that. It helps both of us out because it gets more people to watch my videos, and you get suggested my videos in your subscriptions. So it's helping us both out. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a good day.